Elizabeth I was the fifth and last monarch of the House of Tudor. She was born in the Palace of Placentia on September 7, 1533, and was died on March 24, 1603 at the age of 69. Her father was Henry VIII and her mother was in Bullen who was her father's second wife. On November 17, 1558, she became the Queen of England and Ireland and ruled it for 44 years until her death. She was also called the Virgin Queen and Good Queen Bess. How did she become the Queen? Elizabeth was third in line to become the monarch and she was not even destined to be Queen. She was behind her half-younger brother Edward VI and half-elder sister Mary I. As her father Henry VIII died on January 28, 1547, her younger brother Edward VI became the monarch at age nine and ruled for six years, dying at the age of 15 because of tuberculosis. After, Mary I became queen and ruled for five years, dying at age 42 on November 17, 1558. Finally, Elizabeth was the last child of Henry VIII to rule England and became the Queen of England, ruling for 44 years. The Start of Queen Elizabeth's White Clown Makeup When Elizabeth was in her 20s she got a high fever and people in England became worried about the succession since their queen remained childless. Later on, they got to know that the queen had caught smallpox. Smallpox was an extreme disease in the 16th century with many people often contracting it. At that time there was no cure or vaccination for smallpox, and almost 30% of the victims died because of it. The young queen survived smallpox, but the disease left scars and blemishes on her skin. Before smallpox and in her youth, Elizabeth used a lot less makeup on her skin, but as she was a monarch and people looked at her closely she started using the makeup more and more in order to hide those scars. In a journal article entitled George Peel and the Judgment of Elizabeth I by Paige Reynolds, she is said to have stated, We princess, I tell you, are on stages in the sight and view all the world duly observed, the eyes of many behold our actions, a spot is soon spied in our garments, a blemish noted quickly in our doings. Queen Elizabeth Restoring Beauty with Makeup In the Elizabeth era, white skin was regarded as a trademark look for the uppermost class. People always admired Elizabeth's way of dressing, her glamour, and her white perfect skin. But, after the smallpox pandemic, Queen Elizabeth's scars became permanent and she was devastated to hear that her beauty had faded because of scars and bruises. She believed that her power to rule England came mostly from her beauty, and it was crushing for her that her flawless skin got damaged. So, she started using heavy makeup to hide those marks. The ingredients she used in makeup she used ingredients like lead and vinegar in her makeup which is called Venetian ceruse. It is said that she was the only monarch that always took a long time to get ready. She used multiple layers of lead and vinegar and applied a thick white mask to her face and neck. The white skin was not a part of racism but it depicted that a woman was of a higher class. This lead makeup was deadly and many women used to apply it as it was common in that era. Though this makeup makes the skin flawless and smooth it has been found that it was poisonous and over time caused hair loss and skin fading. Even Lisa Eldridge in her book Face Paint, the story of makeup tells us that remains of lead were found in top-class women's graves from ancient Greece and that in Tang Dynasty China lead pigments were also used in cosmetics. On the lips she used mercury. If you have seen a portrait of Queen Elizabeth you may have noticed that her lips are very red. The red color she applied was from cinnabar a poisonous substance that contains mercury. This way, mercury entered Elizabeth's body through her lips and lead through her cheeks. Mercury is considered dangerous for the body as it causes depression and memory loss, a similar condition to what was felt by Elizabeth at her demise. The way she used to remove makeup. In today's world, we get makeup removal, but at that time there were no such products. At that time, Elizabeth didn't remove her makeup every night. Instead, she used the same white lead makeup for a week. She used to remove it with a mixture of elements like eggshells, alum, and mercury. Thus, this leads to another use of poison in her makeup. People at that time would say that her skin became soft after makeup removal, but basically, it was peeling one layer at a time. All these caused wrinkles, aging, and the deterioration of her health. Elizabeth I's cause of death. 
Towards the end of her life, she went into a profound melancholy and denied the doctor to monitor her. She didn't take a rest and for 15 hours continuously she stood because she assumed if she rested she wouldn't be able to get up. So her women spread pillows around her and she fell and passed away on March 24, 1603. At the time of her death, she passed the crown to James I. The causes of her death are still debated. There are mainly three possibilities. As she wore lead and mercury in her makeup for decades, it led to toxic material inside her body. People think that may have caused her death. Some believe it was cancer and pneumonia. Some believe it may be blood poisoning. Blood poisoning may have happened because she never took out her coronation ring in the 44 years of her reign which drove the ring into her flesh. In the week of her death, the doctor requested her to remove the ring. It is said that maybe blood poisoning happened because of the removal of the ring. Elizabeth Southwell who was a lady-in-waiting to the deceased queen said that Elizabeth's coffin burst, as it is claimed in Elizabeth Southwell's manuscript account of the death of Queen Elizabeth by Catherine Loomis. Overall, Elizabeth I was the greatest ruler in England history, and her reign is considered as a golden age by historians, since this era leads to the flourishing of art such as theatre and William Shakespeare's drama. People admire Elizabeth's rule with its harmony and prosperity.